The landscape of the North American Southwest appears as an ambient room, as visual language of lived time. As visual translation, these opposites merge into a symbiosis. Do I imagine landscape, or does landscape reflect on me? Is landscape a romantic topic of escape, inspired by infinity, or is it an ecological disaster? While landscape was subject to the will and spirit of the late Baroque period in a European tradition, and degraded to geometric alignments of the nobility, the Romantic period of the 19th century projected the soul of the author and the artist on and into the canvas, and thus into and onto the real landscape. Sometimes landscape disappeared as a longing, as in Caspar David Friedrich's paintings. At the beginning of the 20th century, modernity opens the bridge to non-Western traditions. Without examining in detail the various notions of landscape, the self, the projection, the ritual, and transformation. Only the ignition of the first atomic bomb in 1945 in New Mexico through an image of the dichotomy of dissolution versus the unity of the self. The result was the counter-movement and the awakening of the 60th generation. But everything vanished into a daydream. Another 40 years later, after several financial and ecological crises and disasters, the exploitation of resources by transnational corporations, wars of intervention, after 9-11, looking at landscape is probably a marginal subject. While land art of the 60s in America was dependent, and still is, on immense production budgets of the foundations, Landscape submerged as backdrop into the popular context. Juxtaposing historical photos of Timothy O'Sullivan of 1872-74 with my photographic research trip to the spiral jetty of Robert Smithson in Utah on one vertical canvas imposes the historical conflict between land, land rights, First Nation claims, mining, especially uranium mining till the mid-80s, water rights, drought and treatment of hazardous waste that still drive part of the Southwest and its economic and cultural decisions. Following my intuition, at Anasazi land, driving up a long and winding route to the enemy ancestors, which the Navajo would call Anasazi. Passing by Poyoake and its casino-built resort, we enter the rocky volcano-made land, tough, compressed by millions of years, older than you can imagine, land that makes you feel young again. We pass by a small town called White Rock in some areas and laps of Los Alamos. White Rock is a quickly set up town for the employees of Los Alamos, probably. 
After some miles of a curvy and cliffy road, we reached the National Monument Park and the Tourist Information Center giving us instructions. First it had been a cloudy day, now it clears up, becoming the bluish New Mexican sky. We follow the path along the excavated ruins, along the former communal roundhouse, climb up stairs while our lungs are already exhausted by the high air pressure. The caves, small in size, nearly indis indistinguishable from the wind, the water made cracks and voids inside the cliffs are looking like a Swiss cheese. As the wind is moving through its emptied space and along the canyon, it fills the silence with a sound made by the gods, reminding to cars passing by on a distant highway. Climbing ladders, taking snapshots like tourists, we end up hiking towards the ceremonial cave, where in fact of erosion we have to climb multiple erect ladders. In vain, I'm exhausted and enjoy the silence, only haunted by the soft howling of the wind. Some conceptual strategies of the 60s and 70s.
How to transcend a pool in space. Is referring to spatio-temporal, political and economic ecological conflicts about water rights that will address the future locally and globally. How to transcend a pool in space poses ironically the question if economy and science, with its materialistic and capitalistic approach, are still capable of solving these conflicts. Its reference to land art projects of the 60s and 70s implies a permanent urgency as installation. As the pond filled with water is constantly evaporating from liquid into fog, leaving a visible trace of sand and stones, it will transcend its liquid state into a transcendental state, reminding to Earth constant change and transformation. Can the vaporous water be recollected? Will it be in a constant diffusion? As there are now enormous droughts, like in California, and water piped through pipelines from distant aquifers to cities like Phoenix in Arizona, Las Vegas in Nevada, or even Los Angeles in California, and due to human misuse of resources, water distribution became already an economic business granting surplus profit for multinational corporations. This project, in con contrast, or this concept, requests water distribution as a transformation of local communities instead of multinational corporations. Installed inside space, it shall reflect on the poetic aspect of water as a substance for life cycles and the basis for the constant processes on Earth. Water had, has been connected to the fluidity of mental processes, to libidinal energy and the sex drive, and has taken in religious mythology the symbol of purification. As the film of John Ford, The Searchers, with its, with its cliché of John Wayne's role model, is still existing to some degree, the real landscape of the American Southwest and its land rights and property policy is still based, based on treaties and negotiations of the 19th century and its civil war. How is landscape abused today with its property and sales management? How has property management failed and led financial speculation into current crisis of land, land use and property? This is a photographic concept for a wall size installation of photos I recorded at First Nation Reservation of Acoma and at the town of Madrid in New Mexico during 2013 during my residency, which shall be installed as a wall size installation minimum 400 to 600 centimeters and shall combine pigment print on high resolution on cloth. This is another proposal of Andrea Sittel's High Desert Test Site in California at Joshua Tree, where she combines communal living with her artistic production. And the High Desert Test Site location is open two times a year for visitors and is also open for site-specific concepts, which you can submit directly to her.
The Boy Dreams by Nolan S. Keats Since time immemorial the Navajo people have blessed their path with a holy substance, corn pollen. It is finally ground and carried in medicine pouches to be sprinkled as prayer offerings. Here we see the Trinity test site of the first atomic bomb explosion in 1945 and it's open to visitors twice a year and the test site is located inside military land. During World War II the Navajo nation was found to have the largest concentration of uranium deposits in the US. Navajo men were employed to extract and refine uranium for nuclear weapons production. The residual product of this process is known as yellow cake, a fine yellow dust that is highly radioactive. Placed side by side, corn pollen and yellow cake look almost identical. And to add, you can enter the Trinity test site, but you must prove the vehicle registration certificate, a valid driver's license proving, proving US citizenship, and a proof of current auto insurance coverage for your vehicle. There's a story that says in the beginning the people were given a choice about which to carry through life. Corn pollen with the power to bless, or yellow cake with the power to poison. The people chose porn, corn pollen, the people chose beauty, the people chose life. There's another story, one of a boy who dreamed of his father. The father carves through mountainsides, excavating uranium Radioactivity permeates his body. His medicine pouch hangs at his side, empty. He has betrayed his joys of the ancient ones. At home, mother works on a traditional rug. Sister plays outside, and the boy meticulously stitches his own medicine pouch. Father returns from the mines, tainted, with lips poisoned by sheets of radiation, breathed over them, he kisses mother. She inhales the yellow cake, rising from his clothing, she will develop lung cancer. With contaminated arms, he embraces sister. She swings from father's venomous hands before sitting to dinner. Her kidneys will fail. Father minds every day for four years, unaware of the parasitic poison housed in his organs. He will die of stomach cancer. And the government will discount his death and thousands more as incidental. In his dreams the boy sees the truth. Rain pours into dynamite blasted fissures in the land, mixing with the yellow cake to become lethal community reservoirs. Livestock from nearby farms bath in that same water, and families will fill their buckets to sustain themselves. The contagion spreads. Elders stature from behind hills, gasp for air through thick industrial smoke, clutch at their skin as it tears, revealing dying vital organs, shriek at father to remember the original joys. Mangled fetal fingers reach from beneath the soil, drumming the song of the seventh generation crying for a return to the way of balance. 
Father's pick connects with the rock again and again and again. As yellow cake cascades down the mountainside. The boy offers trembling handfuls of sacred yellow corn pollen to the boiling air. He whispers his prayers to the sky, pleading for a cleansing rain, one that will reveal the footsteps of ancestors who walked in beauty. The Boy Dreams by Nolan Eskeets, written 2008. And here are some examples of center for land use interpretation attached of radioactive waste sites splattered across the United States of America. The Los Alamos Labs is 50 miles in distance of Santa Fe, the main city of New Mexico. And it's still active. Some disposal cells which look like land art but the three to four football size fields contain uranium waste just deposit inside and above the land inside New Mexico, Utah and Nevada. New Mexico has also the only waste isolation pilot plant called WIP in New Mexico. It's an underground storage facility and has been constructed since the early 1980s. It was opened at the beginning of the 1990s but was recently closed in 2012 or 13 due to a leak of uranium gas leaking out of the underground chambers.
Here's an example of a uh, nuclear accident comparable to Harrisburg, Three Mile Island, but publicly not very well known. And it has been the Dirt Rock uh, uranium spill. When overground uranium deposit just leaked into a river which is, has been used for drinking water and ran, it ran down a 200 mile stream. I also like to uh, introduce or show some uh, recent works as studio works and site-specific competitions I took part. This is the Mars Spirit project of 2009 and 12 where I got introduced into landscape by working with the database of NASA's Martin Rover Spirit and his photographic recordings of the landscape of Mars. And this more or less escapist uh, project uh, worked out as a print edition, a video, a fictional model for a Mars station. And I transformed some of the photos into paintings and gouaches. In 2011 and 12, I worked on the uh, on a project which had the idea of the non-site or the heterotopy in mind, wherein two or more different cultures meet in a non-space, either two different chronological subjects or two different geographical objects meet and I chose Robert Smithson and Sonic Youth who never met and I chose Bell Bellini the Italian painter and Hokusai the Japanese painter woodcutter who also never met and let them meet on the canvas. Then in 2012-13 the Rosetta Earth project based on a global co collaboration of language specialists and native speakers working on a contemporary version of the historic Rosetta Stone to last from 2000 to 12,000. And the goal is oh, to build a meaningful online survey and near permanent physical archive of 1,500 fading uh, native languages. And my, my idea connected with that already, with that project already taking place is that an alien civilization makes contact with the Earth in the year after 12,000 and finds this digital archive. I took part in uh, site-specific competitions with concepts referring to different ideas and this was a reflection about the museum of the future. This is a mod model out of plaster and it shows some over and underground sites of a museum. And although this is an architectural project, it took part in one site-specific competition where I reworked the model for inside space. 
Then I took part in uh, 2009 in the Shasha Biennale while the Green Revolution in the Arab uh, countries just had started, started asking for more democracy. And this democratic uh, revolution during that time I proposed to the wealthy Jasha Emirate as a green boxing ring of green growing grass inside or on top of an aluminium structure. And I proposed um, an interactive transparent wall as a kind of a newspaper billboard wall where visitors could leave their reflections and ideas concerning home and housing. I also took part in uh, 2011-12 in the German Parliament competition for the Elisabeth Lüders House. This is an addition to the German Parliament building where I proposed as concepts seven site-specific installations and these concepts and ideas referred back to my Mars Spirit project and in detail um, I proposed some time measurements to be installed inside the German Parliament detailing time uh, sorry, hours and seconds. I proposed uh, Mars stones to be layered inside the tiles, inside the yard. And as you see below in the third sections, I also proposed a photographic wall showing the Martian landscape as 12 big size photos the glass. Back to the recent project of unsettled landscapes and I'd like to propose some current readings and the main reading is by Lucy Arley Part who is mostly known as a feminist and art historical writer of the 70s and 80s and she moved from New York to New Mexico and bought some property there to live. And she compiled a book during 10 years and reflecting about the land surrounding her property, mainly the Galisteo Basin. And she titled the book Down Country. And the photographs are supplemented by Edward Rennie. And her most recent reflection, um, published in 2013-14, Undermining, um, connects uh, land and land use more to artists, historical and contemporary notions. I also suggest Judy Pasternak uh, reflecting about yellow dirt and yellow cake, the conflicts be between the First Nation people and the US government, also explained or detailed in The Orphaned Land by V.B. Price and I would suggest Land and envir Environmental Art um, Land Art of the 70s by edited by Jeffrey Kastner and Brian Wallace and I would suggest um, the photographic photographer Robert Adams The Place We Live In. My recent books mm, I published as print on demand and as you may know uh, you may order them here during the exhibition or online via my blog or studio and I would recommend to do so to support my studio work and my research. Um, so this is Mars Spirit of 2010 and a photographic document, documentary about the Lower East Side in New York. It documents a short photographic stay in 1992. And I would suggest um, my recent uh, book, Painting 2006 uh, till 15, 
documenting my painting process and connected to uh, unsettled landscape the outcome of my residency at Santa Fe a photogra photographic artist diary called New Mexican Travels available in an edition of 25 and a collector's edition in an edition of five prints documenting my photographic research trip to Spiral Jetty in Utah, Acoma, Madrid and Bandelier in New Mexico. I would like to thank you for your patience.